Listening and Doing My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of the moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks in the face in, at his face in the mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away immediately and forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting that they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep tight rein on their tongues to deceive themselves, and those and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and flawless is this to look after orphans and widows in distress and keep oneself being polluted from being polluted by the world. So and that is from James um, 1 verses 19 through 26. So we are back to, uh, at least where I am, uh, back to a long weekend. And a long weekend that we all love to celebrate and we all love to gather together and do things in massive groups. But is now the time to do that? When you consider that if you gather, go to a gathering in large groups not knowing who's there and how to get back a hold of them, those who who gathered with you, in the face of the virus that is making so many people so very sick, that in the U.S. they have over a hundred and fifty million people who have died from it. that this virus is causing so much controversy and confusion around the world that people are starving in South America because food chains are being broken? Is it a good idea? Is it a loving idea to gather in large groups so that the virus can spread. So, as we're going into this, or we're in the middle of this, I should say, in the middle of this long weekend, and we'll have tomorrow off, for tomorrow being Monday, of, of course, um, maybe we should consider this. Bringing together smaller groups, family groups, 
maybe now is the time to gather small groups of family together and have that family picnic. It's great to be outside. I mean, I I, I, I like picnics. Picnics are, are fun. They're cool. Um, you, you get to sit out in the sun and maybe throw a ball or a frisbee around or something, you know. Um, I have a I have a drone that that um, I have yet to fly. It was given to me for Christmas. You know, maybe that's the thing to do. Open up the patio and just have a couple friends, close, close friends. Nobody new from outside of your general bubble. It may not be such a good idea. It may not be the loving idea to expand your bubble right now. I have friends who um, are entrepreneurs, small business owners, and they're consultants, things like that. They're staying and working harder on the clients at hand helping those who they've already gathered into their bubble. Doing more for for clients rather than ex- trying to expand their bubble so that they can gather more clients in. Because that may be the more loving way to do things. Instead of having large gatherings, keep people small and close. Those who already know your name. And I would say no matter what size the the gathering, make sure you're able to keep track of everyone who's there. Nobody wishes virus or illness on on people, but we have to be aware that it it it, it is a possibility. So, with th- with that being said, so road trip at at hand. Um, the last long weekend that we had, we're, my wife and I going away the, this long weekend, we, we decided to stay home and just be the, the two of us and maybe some surrounding neighbors that we've known for a long time. Um, but we took a road trip. We went um out into orchard land, as I like to call it, where there's lots of fruit and and we wouldn't visit farms in a safe manner they they have um outside shops where you can buy the fruit and things like that and um, we wore our wore mask and and um and the um, the farm shop owners they have plexiglass so so as to protect while we while we completed transactions and things like that and they got their money and we got to run away with lots of fruit and we're drying the fruit we're canning the fruit and we're doing all kinds of really fun things together. To some of it's going to be turned into gifts, you know. It's kind of hard to shop in in crowds, right? So, you know, hey, why not give some dried fruit or some jam or something like that to to some of our loved ones uh, for Christmas, right? Because if we can't really just go to um 
the 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 department stores and and shop like we like we usually do, right? And online shopping um, because of quarantines and things like that from places like China and and uh, India, the products are being quarantined, so it takes longer for it to get to us and thus get getting to uh, those who we want to give it to. So this is what what we decided, and. It's becoming a lot of fun. We got to meet up with um, one of the, the um, or nearby one of the orchards is um, a campground that's owned by a family member. And we got to ha- meet up with them um, on the, on the campground. And um, if you have found us through the blog post um the picture of the duck and the bunnies and everything um that came from that campground so find ways to share your time with people in a loving way in a loving way this year and maybe for the next couple years could mean Crafted presence, well thought out presence, well thought out events that keep people in small groups, not large groups, doing things so that we know that when people leave, they'll have the happy feeling knowing that they spent time with you, that they will have that feeling of belonging because love was spread throughout the event. We all could gather together in this single conversation. Maybe a more meaningful conversation. Really getting to know what it is that people are up to. Really being able to listen rather than having distractions of multiple conversations going on around you. Now may be the time to do that. Maybe that could be one of the deeper lessons that God is trying to hand us with a virus. Maybe there is a reason to be grateful for this virus if we have learned to connect in a deeper way with those who are close to us. So... With that, let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the give, love that you have given us, the love that you have put in us. Thank you for the examples of how we're supposed to act, how we're supposed to treat each other, how we're supposed to treat the beings that you have put around us in the universe that you have given us. You've given us just great examples of how we should treat each and everything with love, caring, kindness, and tenderness. Help us to realize the love that you have put inside of our hearts. Help us to revel in it and let it grow. So it doesn't just stay with us. So that it spreads throughout all of your creation again and again. Which each of us who learns the lessons of how to spread love. So your universe, your creation grows in the love that you created first. 
Help us to be grateful for all the things that teach us lessons so that we learn and we grow in the love and protection that you have for us. We ask for all these things, Lord, in the way that you only know how to show us. In the infinite matter that you have given each of us to experience our lives. Amen.